Hello to everyone and welcome to my newest tutorial about uh, Java and Sync. And I know it's been a long time since I made my latest uh, tutorial about uh, Java and Sync, but uh, without further excuses, let's continue with new tutorials. And in this newest tutorial, I'll show you how to use a very useful Sync component called JComboBox. So basically, JComboBox is this. Uh, one button with uh, drop-down list below when you click on it. So let's start with coding since I already created my newest class, JComplex tutorial. And here, first thing I'm going to do, I'll create my top-level container, which will be JFrame. And now I'll also create a JPanel. And now I'll create a JCombo box. And as you can immediately see, JCombo box is a generic class, so I'll have to specify type parameter. So it can be type parameter can be various. It can be, for instance, a string, integer, float, uh, double, or even image icon. And uh, in this first case, I'll I'll specify string as a type parameter, and I'll name my combo box instance J combo box instance combo box combo box, and now I'll generate my constructor. Good, and here in my constructor I'll add some values to my combo box, and in this first part of this tutorial. Uh, basically, I'll show you how to create a J combo box with uh, static content. And you will also see that uh, content of J combo box can be dynamic. So I'll say combo and I'll call add item method to add some value. And as you can see, it will prompt me to pass string value. So I'll pass something like China and I'll pass something like Russia, USA. Okay, that's enough. Now I'll add my combo box to panel. Combo box and panel to frame. And I'll call standard methods for JFrame. Good, now let's run this small application to see what we have. Okay, so here it is, our JFrame with JCombo box within. And as you can see, JCombo box is populated with our values as we specified here. Good. And uh, now I would like to show you how to add, for instance, some other types, in type of items in your combo box. And for instance, let's try to add image icons in our combo box. So I'll try to add these three icons in my J combo box. And first thing I have to do uh, is to change my type parameter, which will now be image icon. Okay. And it will be image icon here. And now let's add our icons to combo box. Item and the new image icon. This get class get resource and it will be like com icon add dot png now. Let's copy this and paste it two times. And here is going to be cancel. And here is going to be refresh. Okay, now let's run it. And as you can see, 
Now we have J combo box and we have these image icons written here. But as you may notice, if we click on one of our items, it doesn't do anything. So in the second part of this tutorial, I'll show you how to listen for J combo boxes, J combo box events. Okay. So in this second part of the tutorial about J combo box, I'll show you how to add event listener on your J combo box. And this will be new kind of uh, event listener. It's item listener, which differs from, for instance, action listener. But uh, before of that, I'll also create a, a single J label. And of course, I'll add my J label on panel. Okay. And now I'll add my item listener on combo box. And I'll say combo box add item listener. And here I'll pass new item listener, which has this uh, item state changed method overridden. Okay, uh, first thing you should know about uh, J combo box is that uh, item event uh, triggers twice when item within uh, J combo box is selected and when item within of your J combo box is deselected. But in this case, I want to listen only for events when uh, item is selected. So I'll say if e dot get state change equals to item event select. Okay. And here goes our code. And uh, what I want to achieve? Well, I want to uh, obtain icon from our combo box and to set that icon in our J label, which will be adjacent to our J combo box. And I'll do that like this. I'll say image icon, icon equals e dot get item and get item. I'll cast this to image icon and get item actually returns selected object in your J combo box. And of course, I'll set this icon to our label by calling set icon method. Now let's run it and here it is. As you can see our add icon or add item is pre-selected so if I click on it nothing, nothing will appear in our J label. But if I click on some uh, other item which is not pre-selected like this cancel item uh, this icon will appear in J label. And if I click again on my add item, add icon, uh, it will appear in our J label. And finally, I'll click on my refresh icon. So, uh, that should be how you listen for events when it comes to J combo box. And finally, in this last part of my tutorial about uh, J combo box, I'll show you how to create a J combo box with dynamic content, uh, which means you will be able to add new items or to remove existing ones. And the uh, easiest way to do that is by using a uh, default combo box model. So before we start, I made few changes. I removed all items from my combo box. I removed the business logic from my item listener. Uh, I also removed J label and uh, my type parameter is string again. So let's start. Uh, first thing we are going to do is to show you how to add new items to J combo box. And for that, let's first create our default combo box model.
and it's also a generic class which will take some type parameter and in this case it will be same as type parameter for our j comma box and that's string okay now let's create a single j text field and j but It will be like 15. And here in button text will be add. Uh, first thing I'll do is here in constructor is to set a uh, default combo box model uh, to our combo box. And I'll do that by calling set model method. And I'll pass my instance of default combo box model. Okay, uh, now let's let's add J text field and J button on our panel. Okay, then let's add action listener on our button. Good. And to add new items in your combo box, you will call add element method from your model. And of course, we'll pass some value, and that value will be text from our J text field. So I'll call get text method from get text method from our txt add. Okay, let's run it now. Okay, here it is. We have empty J combo box. And now let's start adding our values. For example, I'll say USA and I'll click add. And as you can see, value has been added in our J combo box. Also, let's type Russia and Russia has been added too. And I don't know, like China and China has been added too. So that should be about adding items in your J combo box. Uh, next thing I'll show you is how to remove items from your J combo box. And for that, of course, I'll need another one button. BTN remove. And also I'll need one string variable. For instance, name will be selected. And it won't be initialized for now. And here I'll assign a value of selected item to my uh, selected variable. Let's name it like selected value. I'll say selected value equals, and I'll say e dot get actually model dot get selected item to string. Okay, so when we click on one of items, our selected value, that value will be assigned to selected value variable. Okay, and now let's add action listener to our button remove. Add action listener. Action listener. And let's say like model dot remove element and I'll pass selected value as an argument. Now let's run it. Okay, I forgot to add my remove button. Uh, 
Let's run it now. Okay, remove button is here now. Does nothing. And now let's start adding our values again. Uh, for instance, let's say Vietnam. Uh, Germany. France. Okay, there they are, these values. Now let's select, for instance, Vietnam and let's remove it. And as you can see, Vietnam has been removed from our J combo box. Let's click on France, it will select France. Let's click remove and France has been removed. Finally, let's click on Germany and we removed our last item. So that should be it when it comes to J combo box. See you in my next tutorial. Bye all.